Yellowstone supervolcano quake swarm hits over the magma chamber. And this could be a sign of eruption. Actually, the magma chamber is right under Yellowstone Lake, as we can see here. The light blue coloring and the pink is the rhyolite uh, flows that uh, were from previous eruptions. And it's not only in uh, the swarms that we see around the caldera. We see swarms north of the caldera. In Montana, we see swarms as well, as well in uh, the southern parts because of the fact that this whole area sits on a fault line. Besides the fact that it's right over a hot spot, there's a magma plume right under the Yellowstone Lake where the uh, magma chamber is. Uh, also, we have to keep in mind that the scientists have said that even the waves, the wave movement, uh, especially during various storms, can uh, have effect on moving movement of the magma chamber's roof. That's how sensitive it is. And they stated that supervolcanoes don't act like regular volcanoes. In that even a, uh, an earthquake a distance away can have an effect on the supervolcano because it's quite sensitive. So the waves, the wave motions on the lake, on the water of the lake, can also create earthquakes in the caldera. Isn't that something? And this article here is by Sean Martin on Express UK, having to do with the earthquake swarm. The supervolcano, as we know, could be about to erupt, and this challenges humanity's existence. That's one of the things that uh, it's a man against nature type of a thing. The supervolcano could be about to erupt, challenging humanity's existence as a spate of many quakes have been felt around the caldera. This We're talking about the month of April, and they said a total of 63 earthquakes struck around the supervolcano. Uh, of course, the mapping of the quakes that they took into account did not take in uh, it took him basically the area of uh, east of Yellowstone, whereas most of the quakes were around the north, south, and west, which were not taken into account whatsoever, which would bring it into a, a, you know, four or five-fold more a bigger number than that. Uh, as we, we were looking at, we were keeping an eye out on them the past, past few weeks, as you know. Now, all of these tremors reported by USGS, the 63 of them, were relatively small. The largest, they say, registering a 2.6 magnitude on the Richter scale, and that hit on April 29. But the experts warned that it is not necessary, uh, necessarily the strength of the earthquake around the volcano, but more the quantity of them. And let's keep in mind that the five magnitude that uh, hit at the uh, beginning of April was not even referred to in the Yellowstone volcano reports for some reason. That was downgraded to 4.4. They didn't touch that at all. And uh, we remember that reading articles having to do with an earthquake almost that big about 35 years ago, uh, they it sent them into a flurry of uh, anxiety because they didn't know why it was so big and what could that mean, etc. Well, this time they didn't refer to it whatsoever, hoping that perhaps people would forget it. Out of sight, out of mind type of thing. Now, some scientists believe that these tremors around the volcano could be a sign that it might erupt again. Portland State University geology professor emeritus Scott Burns said that a group of small tremors around the volcano usually signifies that magma and gases beneath the surface are beginning to move. Uh, they're exiting and they're trying to move. He says, if you get swarms, earthquake swarms, under a working volcano, the working 
hypothesis is that magma is moving up the underneath there. If you get swarms under a working volcano, the working hypothesis is that magma is moving up underneath there. Of course, that's only logical. Jamie Farrell, uh, she's the deputy uh, uh, geologist at uh, 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 Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Uh, I think the head geologist is Poland, Michael Poland. So Jamie Farrell, uh, she says she's at the University of Utah, Salt Lake City, believes that is just part of the natural cycle for Yellowstone volcanoes, saying earthquake swarms are fairly common in Yellowstone. There is no indication that this swarm is related to magma moving through a shallow crust. Well, scientists say earthquakes in Yellowstone should be taken seriously for other reasons as well. In 2014, in a lecture, Job Lowenstein, the leading scientist in charge of monitoring Yellowstone, said major earthquakes in the area could cause, for one thing, landslides. He said the last big one was in 1959, and it caused a big landslide. This is a geological hazard that's, again, much more present in the area than a volcanic eruption. People living in the area should be familiar with it. Yellowstone Caldera, supervolcano, last erupted 70,000 years ago. That was a big eruption. And the volcano, if the volcano were to put, uh, were, were to, to uh, uh, erupt today, it would, first, for example, be a, a devastation, a catastrophe, and 87,000 people uh, would be in risk immediately. And it would make two-thirds of the USA immediately uninhabited, uninhabitable. A large spew of ash into the atmosphere would block out the sun's rays and directly affect life, creating a volcanic winter. The eruption would be a staggering 6,000 times as powerful as what we saw in the eruption of Mount St. Helens that took place in 1980. And the ash deposited in 11 different states in five Canadian provinces. If the volcano explodes, a climate shift would ensue that the, uh, as the volcano would spew massive amounts of uh, ash and as well as uh, gases, sulfur dioxide, into the atmosphere, which can form a sulfur aerosol reflecting and absorbing sunlight. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece and Capota, 
and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.